Offensive line, we got to go over. Are we better or worse than we were last year? And as usual, the pitcher tells you everything you need to know. If you case you're wondering, the man in the front is not Brian Dable, Connor. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is Carmen Brasillo in the front. Behind him is the guy that doesn't wear the hoodie anymore. He now works for the Washington Commanders, Bobby Johnson. And we kind of alluded it to the very beginning of the show here. But that's the reason why I'm excited to see what the line does this year. Bobby Johnson was a hack job of a coach, point blank. And I hate to be like a jerk about it, but he just wasn't good at his job. And I questioned it, absolutely questioned it. When we first got him as a coach, like why this guy, like, is he a buddy of, of Dables? Is that what's going on here? Does he have like secret nudes when he showered after a game one night? Like what's going on here? Because like, <laughs> he just didn't do anything in Buffalo. I'm sorry, but the line was not good in Buffalo. It wasn't. Yeah. They were I mean, having trouble keeping jo- Josh Allen in the pocket. And that's the biggest issue. Like you mentioned, as far as, you know, it wasn't this bad. That's because they had Josh Allen. He had the mobility. He had the pocket presence. He has things that Daniel Jones just doesn't have. He's a better player. He's able to get the ball out quicker and process things quicker. He's a better player. If you put Daniel Jones in that line, he would have got crushed. And guess what? We did put him in this line, basically. He got crushed. So I, I think that that's it's going to be a big jump. I really do. And I think that when you look at it, we talked about Evan Neal, seventh overall pick. Andrew Thomas with what? I think fourth overall pick, was he, that year? Um, you got a second-round pick in John Michael Schmitz. You got a third-round pick in Josh Azudu. You got a fifth-round pick in Marcus McKeithen. Put a lot of, a lot of capital into this room. And we haven't gotten our gains. It went full on into the investment talk there. Yeah, it's about to say. <laughs> we, we need some ROI. Analyzing. We need some return on <laughs> our investment here. Uh, if not, it's time to cut, cut these players loose. But when you have the consistent fact that you're bringing in player after player with a good pedigree of success in college, with the you know the pundits coaching staffs all saying this guy's legit this guy's gonna be good eventually gotta look in the mirror who's coached him and say what the hell are you doing wrong dude pretty much evan neal was considered the top tackle in that draft jms was considered the top center in his draft and none of them looked anywhere near where they should be no, and again with JMS, somewhat of a pass because we think the injuries were his problem. Evan Neal, though, Evan Neal alone, that how bad as he's played, should be enough to get any offensive line to lose her job. Basically, mm. it's it's pathetic how bad. So I'm excited hey, to see Priscilla when he does. They literally have only had one day, one day or two, what a day or two, one day, ah, one day one or day two pick that the Raiders selected on that line last year. That's it. He made an average line. And, and again, that's what I'm hoping for here. I want an average line. We have the depth. We have the options. We're going to get this to happen. I really think so. I'm cautiously optimistic about the offensive line and i'm also cop- cautiously optimistic that evan neal is going to make a whopper sandwich for me at some point this season yeah who you get your way <laughs> hold the pickles hold the lettuce i hope special orders do upset you evan neal <laughs> <laughs> uh them talking trash about the content creators and fans we're gonna get you can I catch you? <laughs> um, so yeah, like I said, there's a lot of reason for optimism, guys. And and like I said, it's I know that usually I'm the Debbie Downer or Rob's the Debbie Downer. One of us usually is the Debbie Downer, I feel like, in a lot of things. Usually. We're both optimistic about this line. 
and and, and I think a lot of it is because we're neither one of us going. This is going to be a top ten line. Like that's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. You just want to hover around that middle spot. That's it. If you go spot. from, you go from, like, top five percent in the NFL. That's top yep. bottom five percent of the five percent of lines, and you go to just right in the middle. Yeah, that's a huge jump. Huge, huge. <laughs> so that's what we're hoping for here, guys. Average. We are here rooting yeah. for mediocrity. Whoop, whoop. Listen, we've seen better. But we've seen worse. That's what we want. <laughs> Listen, no what we see this year, we've seen worse. <laughs> We're Giants fans. We've seen bad offensive line. Uh, Thanks for listening to Two Giant Goofballs, a New York Giants podcast. We appreciate your support. Thanks so much.